All right, we'll get started with the lesson. Week 8, Section 3. I'm going to be wrapping up on, uh, by no means is this exhaustive, okay, what we've been doing. This Robert uh, McKilquin uh, that I took some of this stuff from, I did a little rewriting, but uh, yeah, Robert uh, McQuilkin categorize these things. And I've heard some other ones from other preachers. Uh, J. Vernon McGee is one that I listen to and uh, talk about these things and these activities. But this is just some to, that we can bring forward in a classroom setting, but by no means is this all the Holy Spirit can do. Okay? Amen? Amen. So we'll go uh, get right into the three. We went over there were ten, seven inward that are going to bring out three outward. So We'll uh, start off with, uh, with the three outward activities. Since we reflect the glory of the Lord, we are being made into His image. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability to reach out to the lost world. Jesus came from heaven to earth to save the lost. Like Christ, we are to reach the lost and the hurting of this world. The Holy Spirit will give us the power to accomplish the Lord's work beyond our abilities if we yield to His power. So this line right here, we've, we've used it already today. We are to reach the lost and hurting of this world. These prayer requests that we generally bring are sick and lost. Well, that's our number one, just sick people and lost people, right? right? That's our number one prayer request. So instead of just coming in here on Sunday mornings, y'all, and praying about it, let's do more than that. Let's get active. We need to be going outward. We need to be we need to be uh, doing things that get out, get us out of our comfort zones. When, we're, when we when we feel that feel that you're feeling, that I still get, it's you have to get through it. You have to work through that. And blessing is waiting for them and you on the other side. A defeat of Satan and his army in that particular battle will be won by us and the Lord through the Holy Spirit. So gifting, <clears throat> we are all unique individual souls. Each one of us has a purpose and a part of God's eternal plan. When we come to Christ, the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our redemption. Now that's not the scripture quoted verbatim, but you can look in Ephesians 1.14 and it'll, it'll, it'll give you the scripture on that. The Holy Spirit also equips the believer, giving each of us our own gifts so we can accomplish the Lord's work. <clears throat> I go to 1 Corinthians there, 12, 13 through 14. It's a little lengthy, but we'll go through this. Wherefore I give you to understand. He's given you this to understand, class, that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God call if Jesus accursed. The Spirit of God will never call Jesus accursed. That no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now don't think that somebody can say Jesus is Lord but it's not hard intent. I believe we touched on this a few weeks ago. That, you know, you might just mouth it but you can't seriously believe that. That Jesus is Lord without the Holy Ghost. You, you, you won't. You won't. The Bible says you won't right there. And, but now, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Mm -hmm. And differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Yeah. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. Mm -hmm. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Mm -hmm. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these, that all these worketh that one of the self same Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. 
For by the Spirit we for by the Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. That's scripture. <laughs> The power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit allow us to accomplish more than we would ever be able in the flesh. While the world looks at titles and pedigrees, the Spirit looks at the heart, searching our real intents. When we are sincere and pure before the Lord, we can walk in the power of the Lord. Today is not a day to, of breaking this down. This is going to come later, but I'm just saying today this is one of the outward activities, okay, is gifting. So, any questions we have or statements about all this, this will come in a, in a later class. What I'm trying to point out to you all today is the three outward activities. So, gifting is one of the outward activities. And each one gets gifted as the Lord, uh, as the Holy Spirit sees fit. And we, if, when we are sincere and pure before the Lord, and He knows our it's true intent, that's when things will start happening. Mm -hmm. Amen? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit moving in us gives us what God will have us to have. Amen? Okay, number two is sending. Before Jesus was taken into heaven, He told His disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they received the Holy Spirit. <coughs> What would the Holy Spirit allow them to do? Jesus said they would have power. Power for what? The Holy Spirit would give them power to witness about Jesus. First thing off, when they came out of that upper room, they come down there and they started preaching the gospel. Amen? Right off the bat. Spirit filled. Holy Spirit came down. The church is beginning. They're coming out. They come out from hiding to right out into the street. They're, they're, they're supposed to be persecuted. We see later on how they do still get persecuted. But here's 3,000, 4,000. These thousands are saved every time they go and, and, and make this movement. Amen? And the gifts are shown. We know that, that uh, we saw that uh, Peter came out speaking in tongues. They came out speaking in languages that everybody understood. And they were just baffled by it. But it was the Spirit doing... What the Spirit wanted done, they were submissive to the Spirit. They went up in that upper room class and they did what the Lord told them to do and they were faithful in what they did. They were a conduit for the Lord. When they came down out of that, it wasn't per se them because their flesh was didn't want that. Their flesh was weak and hiding. But the Holy Spirit came upon them and moved right out amongst the people. Amen? Amen. In Acts 1 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So that in our in our language would be after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. And ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. From the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't know our Word. We don't really know what we're doing. All we can do is seek God and be shown what to do. Amen? Do we understand that class? I would hope by now this whole class knows that, but our, our brothers and sisters who are just coming or who don't really know that, and they're, they're my, my, I shouldn't say favorite, but I, it's one that is used a bunch. Is I, can, I don't understand the Bible. Or I, I can't read it. I, I can't get it. I couldn't get it. You just sit there reading. You still can't get it all the way. You have to sit there and wait and be faithful to it and read it and read it over and over and God will show you what He wants you to do with that Word. Amen? Amen. When you eat food, you don't even know what it's doing. You might have went to class or some science or I don't believe we have any medical doctors in here that know how things break down into all this and where they go and how it happens, but you do it, right? You don't understand it. You understand that it either tastes good or it doesn't, amen? Once it goes past your throat, 
Most of us don't know what's happening. But we do it anyway. So we can keep going. We ingest it. It's funny how we have... They talked about in the Old Testament eating the scroll. <coughs> to me, that's reading the Word. Yes. In our yes. time, that's right. eat it. Yes. You know? Yes. Amen? Well, it says in uh, the book of John <coughs> that I read yesterday also, Jesus said, you will eat my flesh and you will drink my blood. And they said, well, they thought that was just some foreign. You know, they couldn't understand what he was saying. But it's the Word of God. It's the Spirit of God that we're going to, you know, take in and, and let the Holy Spirit digest it into our minds and our bodies and souls and then send us out to be witnesses of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And we've got to go out with those exact words there and, and tell them what it means because can you imagine how heavy that is? And it still mm -hmm. is in some culture. <laughs> when you read that, it... It sounds like cannibalism. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know, yeah. I know. I know. That's not good. <laughs> and maybe it is because we are Christ. <laughs> and we want to eat of this Word. Praise Amen. Lord, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Give me some more, Lord. Give me all I can handle. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Y'all forgive me on this. It's a cough drop. I got a little itch going. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. After we come to Christ, we have power because God's Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. God empowers us to take the gospel of Jesus to the ends of the world. All we need to do is yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. We are commissioned to deliver the gospel. We are in fact commanded. The closer we are to the image of Christ through the transforming power of the Spirit, the more clear the command is. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to accomplish His will. So sending and going out, the Holy Spirit's come in. He's, if you you come back here and you've gotten some gift, the gifts that we don't talk about per se so much when you talk to other churches or whatever, you know, who's looking for the discernment of spirit or who's looking for the <coughs> word of wisdom? I'm seeking the word of wisdom. I want that word of wisdom. I'd love to be able to have the gift of healing. We don't see people seeking that so much, you know. I don't know if their faith's not in it or what. But working in miracles. But I want that wisdom like Solomon wanted. Solomon, God's told him he could have, I'm, and I might but not be quoting verbatim, but God was going to give him what he wanted. And he said he wanted wisdom. And God loved that. He wanted godly wisdom. And when he got that, he got everything. Amen? Mm -hmm. Seeking God. Seeking wisdom from God. So three is glorified. Mm -hmm. We are in the process of transformation, class. We're not there yet. But here again, the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our redemption to come. We will one day be perfected and glorified in the image of Christ restored from our fallen state. In the book of Revelation, we see the completed work of the Holy Spirit in this age. I didn't so much like that, just the work of the Holy Spirit completed. So I put in there, in this age, this earth age, the Holy Spirit's going to continue to live forever. When we get past... Well, I'm not going to get into all that. I'm going to leave it at that. We see the completed work of the Holy Spirit in this age when the new Jerusalem, the eternal home of the saved, descends from the new heaven and the new earth. Amen? Well, Revelation 21, 1-7. through 7. This is great. This is us. This is getting near the end of the book, y'all. And this is what John saw. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. 
and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. For the rest of eternity we will enjoy the presence and blessing of God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can choose to have a victorious Christian life. Looking forward to the day of our redemption, we have God's promise, our fellowship lost at the fall will be restored. Amen? And I, I, came, I knew this class, I wasn't going to take this late, We've been running them late. But these things right here, each one of these could take a week or a week or a week, you know? So I didn't want to get into all that. I wanted to get us through this. So these other topics are going to be coming up in the future. Me and Sharp haven't talked about it. And I don't know what God's late, where He'll lead next. Next week, I don't know. Generally, I have my stuff ahead, but. As of right now, what week nine is going to be, I don't know. But I will definitely be equipped and ready next week. I feel 100% confident because God will lay it on my heart what to do and what to put down. Any questions? I have a question. So when you're talking about the transforming part, I've been feeling like when everything happened at work and I, I quit my job, I felt like maybe God wanted me there to be a light. But now I realize that being there, it was harder for me to be a light being there because I got caught up in all the stuff that was going on. And the last time I was there, it was the same way. And I quit and I just cut ties with everybody there. <clears throat> but this time there was, a, there was a lady there that I got really close to. And she was going through some of the same things I was going through with different people. And, you know, she would call me and she would just talk and talk and talk and talk. And when I was there, we got into the gossip thing to where all we did was sit and talk about everybody and how bad it was. But I can I can tell the difference now because I'm not there and I'm not in it and I'm not hearing it. I'm able to witness to her more. And she called me crying and texted me crying the other night saying that she had just had a horrible day and she doesn't know why she she's on this earth and she don't know why God puts her through all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just sitting there, and I was like, well, I could sit here and just go through, well, what, who, who said what? What was this? And my mom was going back and forth, and I sat down, and I just started typing, and I didn't even know what I was typing until I got done with it. And when I went back and read it, I was like, thank you, Jesus, because if I had been there, I couldn't have witnessed to her like I do now. And it was. And she texted me the next day when she got off work, and she, she just said, thank you so much for speaking God's word over me. And she said, because I went to work today, and it was a totally different day because I did what you said God told you to do. And I was just like, I was just, I was just amazed at how God used me because I don't ever get, I don't ever see that part. And so I've been feeling bad about quitting my job, and now I don't because now I can be a light to her without being there. So that's transforming. <laughs> Amen. Did you quit your job in a respectable way? Did I have to answer that question? <laughs> no. No, I didn't quit my job in a respectable way. Okay. I didn't. I, I, I texted the night before I was supposed to go back to work and told her I'm not coming back. Okay. And it was wrong. I know it was wrong. But. Thanks for your honesty, sister. I was yeah. meddling in your business. I ain't no sense of lying about it. Right. There is. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to get another job because I don't think she's going to give me a good reference. Right. But also God might just want me home right now. 
that's another little thing maybe kind of off the record just from business standpoints of you and being Christians out here in the world even though it would have bothered you you would have it would have been hard to stay there yes but that's where our you agree with that Sean? I do yeah. we need to do things that are to not be well not to tell you they love to attack us they do you want to say something? well I think that you know we, we've got to understand that everything that we're going through is a growing process to become more like Christ. Yes. And, and, and so the more we can learn from the things that we're facing to, to do that, the more we will be acting like Christ when the difficulties hit. For example, you, you're, you're learning through this process that uh, you, know, you were not as strong as you would like to have been while you were there. Sometimes that's a painful pill to swallow, but, the, but it's great. You have to know that to know you need to grow and, and to, to push on into that so that the next time you're in a job situation that's very similar, you can have, be, have grown enough to where it doesn't affect you the same way. You can still remain a Christian. And that's part of the growing process is, is learning that I'm not there yet, but since I realize it, I need to push on through that. Uh, I alluded to this, Brian and I were talking about it, you know, a month ago, and we were just kind of hitting on it, that, you know, these men that were getting put in jail, they had been tested and tried and, and, and grown to the place where God could trust them to still act like a Christian, even when they got thrown in jail falsely. You know, they didn't, they didn't deserve that. But God had pushed them enough to act like Christ in spite of whatever the world was throwing at them, regardless of how difficult it was, regardless of who wasn't being fair to them. And most of us are not there yet. We're still growing toward that. Um, I, I've had similar situations at my jobs where I didn't act like a Christian at first, and I had to learn. I got to act like a Christian even when they do things I don't like, even when they mistreat me, even when they abuse me, lie on me, because the Bible says they're going to do that. Yeah. I've still got to maintain a Christian uh, attitude, a Christian like personality so that they will see Christ through all of that regardless of what it is um, and and yeah they lie on you cheat you steal from you you still got to bow out like a Christian and say you know what okay I might like a Christian but I'm gonna work somewhere else and I'll give you a two-week notice I'll do what's right or whatever but we got to be like a Christian anyway right and it's a growing process it is. oh it is that's what we were saying here that you know we're not perfected Right. We're gl in glorifying God. So you glorify God when we, even though you don't think in your fleshly mind, but when we're doing things that aren't pleasing to us, but, but we're doing it to God. God knows our heart. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're fasting and you're hungry, you know, and you're not doing that. God knows that you're hungry and you're not eating because of me. That's, you're, that's faith and that's love. So here we are. And I fall short too. And I... I I catch myself, or I get convicted, whichever you want to call it, but it don't feel good when I'm not, when I'm standing out there and they're watching me. They're still watching. Isn't it, is, isn't it so wonderful when we do error, do conviction yes. to our hearts? Yes, yes. Amen. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I had someone yes. told me one time. I praise him for it. He said, uh, I quit paying my tithes. I got behind. And he said, but the Lord convicted. I didn't pray the Lord. He said, why don't you pray the Lord for us? He gave you no chance. That's right. You're faithful in paying your tithes. Yeah. Um, there, you know, but if people are conscious, you know, I don't know how, how you feel about it. Our conscience can see us. Yeah. Yes, it can. Right. Uh, what we do in the dark, you ain't going to see it. God sees it. Right. And what do you, uh, I worked with a man one time, he's a good Christian man, and he said his aunt lived in Belmont, North Carolina, <laughs> and she was in a Pentecostal church with long dresses, the honey bun, and her beauty. In the long sleeve, the old 20 And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Either. Right. But the thing about it, he said, as a young boy, his aunt would come and spend a week with them 
and they would go to the beach. She'd have her bathing suit and have her short britches on while she's in South Carolina, but when she goes back to Belmont, North Carolina, she would just see one on sale. All right. I, I think it's wonderful when I do something and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost will quicken your spirit. And I, I think I shared this with you. I believe in the Holy Ghost. Uh, the evidence, the Bible says, is speaking in tongues. I put more emphasis on the spirit of He'll tell you what to go on, He'll tell you when to speak, He'll tell you when not to speak. The Holy Ghost is evidence of speaking in tongues. But as you mentioned a few minutes ago, that at Jerusalem, when he went there and went to the upper room, the boss said he got all in one accord. Now, that was a miracle. Yes. I don't know how many members this church has, and I, I'm sure they don't want bad, but I doubt seriously we would all see them in one building at one time. In one accord. Right. This is That's right. Miracle. But I, I think it is possible. And I, I, I scripture came to him, I can't remember what it said. Uh, we have been placed in the body as it pleased him. And That's great. sometimes uh, we need to have that boldness to stand up. Now, that's wrong. But we are too many of us. I, I, I was in a wonderful service here. Uh, all the service. I think your pastor is anointed. He's anointed. And, uh, but Bishop Williams, the state overseer, called one son. And I, and I have a problem with my remembrance. I think he quoted one scripture and he told his testimony and people came forth. See, only you know who you was really at. Just every one of us. We was in old Mark here a sin. And we couldn't get out. But God pulled up, up. And He washed us with the Word and the Spirit. And we become a new creature. Uh, that boldness. Uh, back home when I was a young man, you call a man a liar, you might as well fight him. So in boldness, you need to stand up and know what you're going to say. Sometimes our testimony is more stronger, especially when we're new converts. We don't know what to say. We, we know that we're supposed to come to church. We know we're supposed to do this. But your testimony can win people to the Lord. And that testimony and everything you just said is all done by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's placed me. Um, I'm in a transistor. Right. Uh, 41 years. I'm, I'm still a member. Right. Uh, of my church. 41 years I've been faithful through my age and my sickness and moving to be close to my family. Um, this is a wonderful church. Uh, there's people here. And I, I talk to